We are Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. My name is Scott. JB4. What's up there, rock star? Who's, whose idea was it to record after a show? Oh, The God. morning after a show? I don't know, but I'm, I'm very happy you said it was noon. Yeah. So. yeah me too. I, I think I could have done three or four. Uh, uh, no, no arguments from me. I told you we should have did it at one or two. It would have been fucking good. Oh, well. You guys rocked, though. Both of you did. It was, was a lot of fun. Show. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, we did a uh, m- myself with a with a team of of individuals, uh, talented guys. Um, some, uh, one in particular who has been a guest of this show before, uh, Mr. Justin Molison and my partner in Jukebox Heroes. It was his birthday. It was his birthday. Also, we did a Stone Temple Pilots tribute show, and the Ginger's band, Ginger and the Bee, were the opening act. We did, and we put out a record. Yeah, you guys put out a record. You put out some merch. Uh, Sherry handed out brownies that had uh, pictures of you guys on the brownies. As emojis. Um, yeah, as emojis. I, uh, uh, I did... Or emobies. Oh. I did yeah. a uh, sexually suggestive uh, thing with my brownie of Teddy's brownie with Teddy standing next to me. Oh. And I snapped a picture of that, but I haven't had a chance to post it yet. Yeah. Is it Facebook appropriate? Sure, why not? Oh, Anything's sure. Facebook appropriate. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm going to get blocked or anything. You know, I mean, if you can see bare tits on Facebook, I mean, this isn't going to, this isn't really going to affect anything. Bears? Nude bears? Bare tits. B-A-R-E, not no. B-E-A-R. All right. So, anyway, so you had fun last night, man? You, you, uh, Did I have fun? Yeah, I had a great time. You know what was great about last night is that, which never happens, is usually being a musician, you're friends with musicians, you guys, everybody plays, or you just don't go out. Well, last night we all were in the same room at the same time, like uh, you know, dozens of musicians, and we all got to hang out before, after, during the whole nine yards, which never happens. So that was sort of one of the cooler things of last night. Yeah, man, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, we uh, we went and had some um, some post show drinks for Justin's birthday. Yeah, and uh, went to a little bar that was around the corner from where we played, and uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun, man. We all kind of sat there and bullshit and. One thing I noticed of uh, being a musician and something that's happened over all these years, you know what's really funny is that it always takes you 20 to 30 minutes to leave an establishment. Because after you play a big <laughs> show like this and everybody's liquored up, there has to be mutual ball kissing for like 20 to 30 minutes. No, you're awesome, man. No, you're awesome, man. No, you're more awesome, man. You don't know how much you've influenced me over the years. And all of this is possible because of guys like you. So you have to go through that bullshit for a fucking it's 20 not, to 30 it's, it's minutes. It's all possible because of 10 or 12 hundred drinks. Oh, that's yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's definitely a, that's that's true. Normally, there is a mutual ass kissing session that's five minutes. But you can add an extra five minutes Per drink. Right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's typically how it goes. Yeah, the whole big I love you, man, <sighs> fucking speech goes on after that. So Right. And then, like, I, w- I wonder how many uh, unresumed conversations there are. It's like, uh, let me get back to you, man. I have a couple of other people to talk to. <laughs> Where it's just like, I'm going to leave and not actually talk to you again is really what should be being said. There is an unresolved conversation. Multiply that by drinks time five. Yeah. <laughs> So right. that's that's the formula for that one. It's like the musician loves singularity. It just becomes nothing but infinite numbers after yeah. you add alcohol. Yeah. No, it was a lot of fun though, man. I'm glad I was part of that. Really cool awesome. stuff. So, and if you're local, um, I'm gonna be doing it again. Except uh, I'll be doing it with a, with an Allison Change tribute that's gonna be coming in a few weeks. So, if you're uh, one of the twelve people that listen to this show and you're in the area and you're interested in coming to check that out, we're gonna be playing at Southport Hall. Oh. Oh right over in the deck room and you know so uh check that out we have an event set up through uh southport hall so there you go like real all right so do we want to get to some news or what is there any news there's a there's a little bit of news and there's some that i'm gonna throw in here real quick okay Um, yeah there's some i have to add in uh first of all well before we actually started recording they dropped a trailer to the uh, fourth season of Star Wars Rebels, which is going to be coming out in October, if I'm not mistaken, is the uh, release. This is going to be the final season of Rebels. They say that they want to resolve the storylines, and this trailer is even more evident that it is right on the heels of Rogue One. 
So I'm willing to bet the way this season's going to end is where Rogue One is going to pick up. So it'll be kind of interesting the way you can revisit that movie during the space battle scenes in particular and see the ghost flying around and we'll kind of know where Hera stands at that point um, during the uh, series. Hera being the pilot of the uh, ghost spaceship that flies the crew around in Star Wars Rebels. Um, if you haven't checked out Star Wars Rebels, I highly recommend it. It's it's fantastic storytelling, um, great animation, and I uh, stand by saying Dave Filoni, who's the director and producer of the show, he's the MVP of Lucasfilm. Is, so, it, did Ahsoka show up last season? Ahsoka showed up in the finale of season one and was a centerpiece through season two. She disappeared in the finale. Well, she uh, faced Darth Vader in the finale of season two, and And, we haven't seen her since. And Filoni has intimated that she's still alive. Yeah. So I'm I'm assuming we'll see her this season. Oh, I think so, in some form. Um, Yeah, also, um, if you don't know who that is, Ahsoka Tano was uh, kind of the main character of of, uh, Clone Wars, which uh, aired in 2003. 11, I think, is when it came out. 2011, yeah. No, sooner than that. It came out right after uh, Revenge of the Sith. It was like 2006 or 7 it came out. Yeah. So, But yeah, great show, man. I mean, check out both of those. Uh, Clone Wars is available on Netflix and uh, Rebels. You can pick up the seasons on DVD, but if you have some other means of streaming. um, When I first started watching it, I had no Disney XD, and um, I was just watching them on the computer. I mean, they have dozens of sites that stream them, so... Check that out if you get a chance. It's really, really cool. Good show. Uh, what'd you guys think of the uh, season two trailer for our, uh, the, uh, the season uh, four? Uh, I'm sorry, the season four uh, second trailer. It convinced me that I need to actually start and watching the show. Yeah. Yep. I'm. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been accomplished. You've yeah. been on it, John. Huh? You've, yep. you've you've kept up with it, right? Yep. I'm I'm caught up. So uh, I'm not. Yeah, it's worth catching up on. Yeah, it's regular viewing for me, man. I uh, I watch that like I watch any other show. I'm just kind of waiting for the episode to come out so I can pop on and, and give it a view. So, But yeah, definitely check that out. Um, another piece of news we uh, reported, I think it was maybe a couple of weeks ago, even last week maybe, that uh, Michael K. White, who played Omar on The Wire, um, he had to actually be cut from the Han Solo movie yeah. because he mm-hmm. couldn't get involved in reshoots. Well... Now it seems that every week we have to deal with some kind of insert skin color washing fucking controversy every week. Whether it's Domino in Deadpool 2 being black or Michael Skern, uh, or Skrin, uh, this, you know, butthurt that he, you know, to, not oh, butthurt, I'm sorry. The fans are butthurt that he's playing a character that's of mixed Asian heritage, so... You know, whether it's any of those things now, they're saying, or it originally came out, that Paul Bettany has joined the cast of Han Solo. Um, He plays the Vision in the Avengers movies. He's also been in a bunch of, you know, he he played the the monk in the uh, Da Vinci Code. Right, right, right. You know, um, uh, Bettany has joined the cast, and they're saying that he was replacing the character that Michael K. White was going to play, and it was going to be reshot. But what they're saying now is is that since Michael K. White was cut out of the movie, this character is an all-new character that's going to help them put some transition scenes together that they need to do. But uh, Ron Howard's very excited. He tweeted out that, you know, he's worked with Paul Bettany twice in the past, and he said, I'm happy to... Happy to be back with him again. He's a fantastic actor, which he is. So wait, yeah. So I lost you on this. So people are people are not happy about this well people were unhappy because they said well if paul bettany is replacing michael k white's character oh this is going to be more whitewashing even though michael k white was playing a non-established character that isn't even going to be in the movie gotcha and oh wait that's right it's a movie and everybody in the movie is aliens so there is no real yeah i yeah right I, i i don't know man i'm just i'm i'm over it it's even more confusing that his name is Michael White. Yeah, right. You know, so when you say whitewashing, it's like, wait, oh, uh, okay. Or, see, see yeah, well, we're betting washing in this case. Exactly. But, but yeah, but I mean, shit, I, I really think now that, I mean, it's it amazes me, and I hate to use the word, but it amazes me how fucking triggered people get on social media. I really do believe now that when you get involved in all of this kind of bullshit and you sign up for a Facebook account, mm. they mail you a pacifier. 
If you're not a cunt, you can throw it away. If you're a cunt, hold on to it so you have a fucking safety device to hold on to. Uh, you know, God, the pissing and moaning. Fuck. It's all right, yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, you're you're dealing with literally and practically an entire problem. I would say more people are connected to social media than percentage-wise than watched TV at any other point in history. Like, more people are connected to everything going on around them. So a lot of times when these flare-ups happen on social media, I tend to treat it like I do someone who's overreacting. It's like, well, I'm going to give it a couple of days before I have an opinion on it because, you know, 9 out of Hello. 10, oh, someone's mad. Um, right. <clears throat> I At the end of the day, sometimes you fuck up and then sometimes people are just being ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't understand it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, there are so many things to actually get angry about. Sure. Yeah. But the shit people get pissed off at is just, it's unfucking believable well, man. Like, like the scrying thing last week, my position was, yeah, it feels like it's overreaction, namely because the character wasn't the main character. However, uh, I think Scrine's letter for why he stepped away was a class act. I thought it was uh, well handled and yeah. uh, super super sensitive. Well, you since know? we're talking about that, I'll jump to that real quick. Um, I have his statement right here. Um, you okay. know, it, and just to give you some backstory, we had talked about this last week. Uh, Ed Scrine, he played Francis in Deadpool. He was the main villain. Um, and was a great villain in that movie. He was. Um, he was brought on to be part of the Hellboy reboot. There's a character from the Hellboy comics that is named Ben Damio. And uh, Ben Damio is of mixed Asian heritage. Um, mixed with what? I'm not sure. I don't know if he's half black and half Asian or half white and half Asian. I don't know. But they cast Ed Skrine. They obviously saw something at Ed Skrine in his performance in Deadpool 2 and thought that he would be a good pick. I mean, fuck, I thought he's a good pick. The guy's a good fucking actor. Yeah. So um, he goes on and eventually the, the the outrage begins of, you know, another fictitious character is being cast, you know, with someone that the, it wasn't represented by race in the fucking comic books. So Ed Skrine, um, which I've never seen this happen before, he actually backed out of the role because he didn't want to piss off anybody. Personally, I think it's fucking ridiculous, but I commend him for how he handled it. You know, I mean, yeah. I'll read his statement right here. Cool, uh, yeah. Last week, it was announced that I would be playing Major Ben Damio in the upcoming Hellboy reboot. I accepted the role unaware that the character in the original comics was of mixed Asian heritage. There has been intense conversation and understandable upset since that announcement. So I must do what I feel is right. And that's to back out of the role. Um, I have a tendency to agree with, with, uh, with, with Zartome from Not Real Radio on this. I mean, you're making a movie, there's an American company that's making the movie mm -hmm. and they're trying to put asses in seats because as we right. can all see, especially the report that we read this morning, that they're coming off of a very anemic summer movie season for 2017, you know, look, they want to cast recognizable people so they can put asses in the fucking seats. Now, the argument can be made that is this role of this character so insignificant that you couldn't put an Asian guy or an Asian female in it to begin with. Yeah, you could make that argument. Or Paul Bettany. But, yeah, or Paul Bettany. But, I mean, dude, look, you know, I mean, look, they put fucking your boy from um from from Creed, uh, Michael, Michael Jordan. Uh, was it Michael... Michael B. Jordan. Michael, Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. They put him in the lead of Fantastic Four. You know yeah. what I mean? Sure, you had your fanboy outrage, but to be honest with you, I think he did pretty good in the role. The movie yeah. sucked, but right. I thought the actors were, were good. They did a good job at what they were given. I agree. So, it, it, And it's funny. It goes both ways. Like People get, they, they get all pissed off because the comic book character is a man and in the in the movie or whatever so when but then when it turns around like you know when they made a female thor or they're thinking about making a female iron man people get you know shitty because of that it's like just well i, I think yeah. the female iron man i actually thought was a cool character because what i liked about that was is that she was mentored by tony stark 
and had the a different Iron identity. Man, yeah. She just had I. She was called Iron Heart. She had the right. Iron Man style, you know, Stark Mark armor for Iron Man. Something like that. I think's pretty cool, you know. But I mean, the Thor thing to me. I mean, dude, look, Thor carries the fucking hammer. He's the guy who's worthy. So we're gonna turn Thor into a woman for the sake of turning it into a woman. I thought it was fucking retarded. But it wasn't even Thor. It was a whole different person that was worthy to carry the hammer. Right. But they keep her in a comic titled Thor. That that makes zero sense. Mm, I think it goes both ways. I think it goes both ways, too. Personally, I have no problem with us, uh, Zazie Betts playing Domino. She looks fucking hot. I, I, I wish that, you know, she had the, the black eye instead of the white eye. But, I mean, I, I'm not going to tit for tat on that shit. I'm sure she's right. going to be great. I'm sure it's going to go off really good. And I have no problem with Ed Skrine playing fucking Major Ben Damio. I mean, dude, he's a recognizable guy to the fanboy community. Put him right. in the fucking movie. So, but this is shit that will continue and only continue to get worse as time goes on. And right. it's pretty fucking ridiculous, if you ask me. Until social media goes away. Social media, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I want to hope that Joe Rogan is correct. I was listening to his podcast and he said, social media is so new. It's kind of like we're in the adolescent stage of it. I agree. Hopefully at some point it will, we'll all learn how to grow up and use it properly. Right. Right. So I'm yeah. The, yeah, I'm, I'm with them. So, uh, anything to add with, uh, white washing, black washing, yellow washing, red washing, polka dot washing, anything to move on with that? No, you can go ahead. I'm yeah. done. All right, um I forgot the well, I didn't forget to report it last week. The news actually dropped right after we recorded our show. Uh last week we lost uh Toby Hooper, who was the uh director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and yeah. Poltergeist. Uh yeah. he died at 74. And um they say he just died of natural causes. Um, it, body just gave up on him. It, it had nothing to do with uh, cardiac arrest or cancer or anything like that. Um, I didn't know this about Toby Hooper. Reading into his biography or you know his uh, his internet obituary, I guess he was a college professor before he became a, a director, huh. and I thought that was pretty mm. cool. Um, he left behind two sons. He was he was unmarried. So, but a big loss, man. He was an he was an innovative director. Yeah. Was so yeah. Uh, R.I.P. Toby Hooper. Um, uh, the World Clown Association has issued a statement due to members losing work. People had school shows and library shows that were canceled. That's very unfortunate. The very public we're trying to deliver positive and important messages to aren't getting them. The organization is blaming this spike of cancellations due to the movie It. That's... All I can say about that is if you're a clown, a professional clown, and you look like the character in the movie It, you maybe should go revisit a mirror and change your look. How about this? Um, superheroes and Jedi Knights and all that shit now is the Vogue. Clowns are outdated as fuck. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not think, gonna, I'm not going to say that. I think that's really but... the. I think that's really the thing. I mean, there's clowns. I went and saw two casino shows, two circus shows at the casino. Um, one was a was a Cirque du Soleil franchised out show mm -hmm. and there was another uh, kind of like high flyer show that they did over at uh, some of the casinos on the Gulf Coast the guy who comes and interacts with the audience in the beginning of the show he's a clown mm -hmm. he's a clown yeah. but mm -hmm. he doesn't have a red nose he doesn't have bozo hair you know he doesn't wear a big right. fluffy suit with big pom-pom buttons on his shirt you know he's just like dressed like a little you know Kind of like a little uh, European juggler right, guy, you know. Right. He looks like a little. He looks like a little European street performer, but he's a clown. And I look at that and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's an updated clown. That's right. pretty fucking neat. More classic. I mean, holy shit! It's not 1920 anymore. It's fucking amazing. Like he doesn't like go off all that old bullshit. You know who else is a, a clown in real life? As an official, like like a. All right, you tickled. Give it to me. <laughs> I mean, this is so disappointing. Uh, the word clown is just inherently funny to me. The fact that, that they were repeatedly saying the word. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, shit, it's a profession. You know, it's like yeah. Occupation Fool from George Carlin. I'll put an E on the end of it just to piss him off. But who, who is who is a clown? Well, a, a real life, a real, real life, life um, a real life circus entertainer maitre d you know a clown is yeah. uh is, is steve-o from jackass 
Huh, I didn't he, know yeah, that. really? He, I didn't yep. Know that. He went to he went they have a clown college. Yeah. They teach how to juggle, they teach how to tumble and do yeah. all that all that shit. I mm. think Doug Jones, the guy who's in a lot of Guillermo right. del Toro's movies, I think he was a clown too. That or, would, he was uh, a mime for sure. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, I mean I, and, I, just, and, I don't think you can blame don't blame the movie because of whatever is going on. Just, just But it fits a, so good in this society right now, man. There's yeah. something to blame for every fucking thing, you know? Are we going to see this movie? Oh, I'm definitely yeah, going to see it. Fucking A. I can't Cl- wait. <laughs> we went from we went from uh, race washing to clown washing. That's it. <sighs> it's unfortunate. But it all kind of fits in the same theme. It, it all comes down game. to this. It's all a fucking blame game. Everybody's pissed off. But I, but I also, you know, they didn't, in their statement, it seemed pretty classy. It's like, it's very unfortunate. They're not like, you know, we've been aggrieved as a profession. Or anything I, like I that. I just don't care, y'all. I've seen some people that are part of these, and, and I mean, I, I guess there's a clown guild yes, or a uh, or, or, or a clown union, so to speak. What what, what is hazing like to get in? There? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> put put piss in their little squirt flowers. No, uh, you can oh, handle God, it. Damn. What it is is that they have to throw they they throw juggling balls at your nuts, and you have there to you squeeze go. the fucking horn every time you get hit. So it can you know it is it's vaudevillian hazing. There you go. So you have to do you know physical damage to a person while they while they make noises along with it. You know. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that visual. <laughs> But I mean, I've heard this shit in the past, though, where people who who perform as clowns, whether they're independent or they're part of some kind of, or they're part of some kind of uh, national organization or whatever, they say that um, this silly phobia of clowns, which I, I totally don't understand. I mean, I can I don't understand it either, but I I it's no, so I do understand asinine. It, actually, I like. When you see those pictures, of like, I, what was it, a few years back, they had a guy who dressed up as a clown and was, yeah. like, walking around certain cities or it was whatever right. it was. But it all preys but- on the fear of this newfound phobia of fucking clowns. I, look, I was scared of clowns when I was six. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, dude, it's just a, it, you know, right, exactly. I mean, Back I watch 50 year old adults like crumble into a fucking pile of goo if they see a clown. I'm like, I'm dude, not, yeah, really? Come but on. Get if the you fuck set out the scene here. right, you know, just like anything, you know, it, it's scary, yeah. but not at a party or at a mall or at a book signing or uh, at a circus. That doesn't scare me. But in the woods, that shit scares me. Oh well, uh, on yeah. a street corner at two o'clock in the morning. But that, that shit preys, scares me. But that preys on the fear of this shit that's been done for like that. That's been this like up this this uh, uh ramping up of of clown phobia over the last fucking thirty years. Yeah, it it plays on that fear. It's something that you know. It's 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 a uh, something that plays on collective dread. I'm just glad that they they can make a movie that is scary. Whether yeah. it's yeah. a hockey mask or a, a ghost mask or a clown, I'm or, just, or, or a doll, or a doll, you know. You know? Yeah. I'm sure the doll society is like, fuck, man, you know, what are we gonna do now? We can't sell dolls because you made a haunted doll. Well, you don't see so, a like, lot of shit. Geist, it's a doll and it's a clown. So what yeah. kind of fucking? Well, you don't see that? a lot of shit from that. I mean, with the doll, with the doll collecting, stupid. That's with, why, right? With the doll collecting community. But like I said, it's like grown grown adults oh i'm i'm so i'm so scared of clowns get the fuck out of here man jesus christ and that's what these guys are saying they're basically saying this stupid phobia that's been pretty much you know created over the last 30 years has essentially fucked us who are trying to bring happiness to fucking kids so you know if i'm having a party for my kid and i get a clown i'll get a clown it's not you know my kid ain't gonna because they ain't watched it it's stupid adults, like you said. Right. They're the idiots. So. Oh, if my kid has a birthday party, there's fucking stormtroopers coming to that motherfucker. I, there ain't there ain't no clowns. But I'm just calling. saying it's you know, it ain't <clears throat> it's it's not the movie that's ruining their business. It's stupid adults that's yeah. ruining yeah, their business. And, and honestly By the way, stop being a stupid adult. If it if it's a movie that's ruined the reputation of clowns, why not come up with a movie in which clowns are the good guys? You know? I mean I think that it should be like Our Killer TV's Clowns from I, from Outer Space. That's that a that's was... a fucking great movie. Yeah, it's so awesome. That that's the shit that they need to spin now to to, to get things kind of back of being a little happy. Right. You know. Hey, look, it's goofy and silly. It's not scary. 
They'll so. remake it. They'll reboot it. It'll be on Amazon. So on um, the uh, cast of Titans, it's been ramping up now. Titans is the uh, short form of Teen Titans, and it does look like they're going to go with more of a an, an adult pro- approach, with a young adult approach with these characters, except for Robin. He's 28 years old. He's pushing 30. Uh, his name is Brenton Thwaites, yeah. and he's been the co-star to Johnny Depp in the latest uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So um, he's got a little notoriety in that, and he's going to play. I, I would assume he's going to play Nightwing. He's not yeah. going to play Robin. Robin. I'm going to go Breaking Bad on the new Teen Titans. Oh, you're not going to watch? You it? guys are going to tell me how awesome it is because I'm. I'm going to at least give it now. a shot. I'm going to watch the pilot because I, I I really like the Teen Titans. I liked them a lot when when I was reading comics, and I'm going to give I'll give it a shot, but yeah. it's got to blow me away for yeah. me to stick with. I like yeah. the cartoon. Yeah, Cartoon's I mean, I'll, I'll try yeah. it. I'll try it. Just like I tried Legends and Oof. all the other stuff that I've given up on. I want those hours of my life back. Arrow and whatnot. They're talking about the, that crossover being good. The crazy crossover. Shoot, the last one was good. Uh, I enjoyed you call it. it? Uh, what's her name from uh, Battlestar Galactic? Good old what's her name? Katie Sackhoff that played Starbuck. Is that who you're talking I about? I think that's her. Yeah. It's going to be in the, the crossover of this yeah. whole thing. That's okay. happening. She's joining up, and also she's going to be making her return to uh, Star Wars. And what we talked Star about Wars. earlier is uh, Rebel Season 4. Mm. She's going to return as Bo-Katan, which she played in Clone Wars, Sweet. who is the uh, leader of the Mandalorian. So Katie Sackoff has been very busy in the science fiction community. And since you brought her up, before we kind of move on to this next topic, um, one thing that we talk about where there's been disappointment from fans of either – gender or race changing of characters when they did the relaunch of oh Battlestar Galactica she played Starbuck right that was actually played by was it Richard Hatch yep played Starbuck in the original um um in the original, in the, in the original show and uh she was you know she smoked the cigar and did it all that shit great. and everything she was and amazing. a lot of people were like Fuck you! You're a fucking asshole. How would you yep. make Starbuck oh a woman? It's like Doctor you're a Who. fucking piece of shit. You're making Boomer a woman and all this crap, and that's all fucking bullshit. And that show is probably one of the highest acclaimed science fiction shows of right. all time. Right. So there's so. an instance where they got it right. Rightly right. so. That's a great show. You are listening to Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar. Television. Movies. Pop culture. Keep up with the latest news from Luke Skywalker all the way to Batman. From Netflix to the CW. And all the news in between. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Or stream our episodes from ppvguys.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at ppvguys. Check out our friends Not Real Radio at notrealradio.com for our segment, Not Real Movie News. Should you listen to more? Yes. Will you agree? Maybe. Jury's out. Indeed. Thank Thank you for listening and action. All right, so here's our uh, last piece of news, which I'm sure is going to segue into a conversation here. The rumors of a movie about the Joker's origin are picking up steam. It's rumored that Leonardo DiCaprio is interested in the role. It's also reported that Jared Leto was caught off guard by the rumors and has expressed displeasure with his management. Um, there, there's there's a, there's actually a follow up to that, and I'm going to read it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's 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 like it's vomitous right now. Yeah. The amount of shit that's coming out, it's like it's puked uh, all over the fucking fanboy sites. Everyone is asking. Uh, I am. I know Ben I am. Affleck what his take is on it, and he said, "My status remains as it always is." I've done the two movies. I've always intended on doing a third if Warner's wants to make it. Certainly, if the bat phone f- rings, I will answer. Now, once again, the Hollywood Reporter is reporting that sources indicate Affleck will not star in the Batman after all, buried in their story on Leonardo DiCaprio being courted to play the Joker in the standalone origin movie unconnected to the DC Extended Universe. Wait, are you saying that Ben Affleck is now not, they're not doing the Batman movie? No, he won't star in it. That's what they're saying. They're saying that it, there's some there's some actual, you know, some belief that with making statements like that, it seems to me it's like he's trying to, he's basically trying to play the diplomatic thing and yeah. probably insinuating that 
they want to move in a different direction. It's right, not, not him no. that doesn't yeah. want to do it. It's them that may not want yeah. him so they can move in a different direction. So th- this whole DC Extended Universe shakeup is resulting in a lot of ambiguity and people kind of stepping back from the dis- like the decided foot forward that they had all adopted uh, weeks ago. You know, like... I, I'm, it's like the hokey pokey. What the fuck? What I'm really curious now is that they're announcing all these movies and doing all these different things now. Could it be that if Flashpoint gets made, Flashpoint uh, huh. is the movie that changes all this shit to bring it to a different continuity? That Something seems... that's going to restart or reboot what they've already done. That seems very smart, except we still don't have a Flash movie. I don't think it's that... going to get made. That's what I was about to say. I don't think we're ever going to get there. That would be the smart thing to do if they were, yeah. you know. If... Or if the Leonardo movie is actually connected to the universe and this is just I don't think a, that. a red I think herring. Isn't Scorsese producing that? What makes that Scorsese's producing the guy I can't remember his name, but the Todd fellow, Phillips. the fellow who wrote right, Eight right. Mile, and, and uh, is that not what we're talking about? That movie? Yeah, we're talking of about course. the, so the you, spinoff Joker you put movie. A, a, Scorsese, a Scorsese name produce. Of course, they're going to go after the rumors are going to start around people that he's worked with. So Leonardo yeah. the crap, the cat, DiCaprio <laughs> makes sense. Like uh, I'm sure they're going to. Bring in well, somebody and else. I mean, he'd be Robert a huge. Niro's probably he'd be a have huge be a get. Rumor. He would oh, be God. a huge get. I mean, but if, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, if you think about it, I, I don't know, dude. I'm thinking this Joker movie might happen. And what it has to do with this is that if Warner Brothers can put Scorsese's name on it, and they can actually lasso DiCaprio? fucking DiCaprio to play the Joker, I think that they will probably make it. Well, if it, if it occurs, that's stupid, in the, but they'll make it. Right, but if it occurs in the '80s. Isn't it possible that the Red Hood storyline could still be a continuity thing based on all the Easter eggs in Oh, so what are you saying? That, Le- that Jared Leto was? I, Well, that Jared Leto or that was still- Robin. I mean, it, it, and it probably wouldn't happen in this movie because it's going to be a Batman-free movie, but that potential is there. Again, that's really a smart idea. I just don't think they're going to do it. Yeah, probably not. That's way too smart. And yeah, too smart Flashpoint? Oh, I puts everything ties it all together nice and neat i think a lot of people sat there and said that they should follow the whole marvel thing and i've i've thought about this for a while now what they should have just did is is look in the 70s i mean we were you know i mean we we were probably what in between when when super friends came out we were probably in between ages four and seven just Mm -hmm. the three of us we religiously watched that shit and we knew who all those characters were now we're in our 40s and yeah. there's a lot of nerd boy, man children, enthusiast of this shit that are nostalgia freaks that remember this shit. And a lot of have kids. I mean, Scott, how, how old is your daughter? 11. So she's 11 years old. I think the thing with it is, is now you got these kids that are in that age range to where they can get interested in shit. There was no need for them to, they could have just made a Justice League movie and just fucking launched it and just did it and not have to worry about all this other shit and use yeah. Batman and Superman as the anchor characters to build this other these other characters up. But um, they just didn't plan properly. And even when you think that it looks like they're going to make steps forward, like I watched Wonder Woman, I was like, fuck, they finally get it. They finally yeah. understand where they need to go. Wonder Woman has made $800 million and it is the highest grossing superhero movie dealing with a character's origin in cinema fucking history and was only like maybe $50 million short of beating Batman and Superman. You know, you look at all that shit and now they come out with all these announcements of all of these different directions and it's like they're throwing shit against the wall it's like they just like they to announce to. movies. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Did you see that they also the, they've been showing pictures again and talking about uh, that Justice League movie that was supposed to come out in like oh seven. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, Justice League Mortal. It was going to be directed by George Miller, who right. directed uh, Fury Road. But the uh, writer strike fucked that movie up. Like yeah. just some of the actors that were supposed to be slotted to play in that movie, like. Uh, yeah, dude, fucking Army, Army Hammer. Hammer was going to play Batman. S- Common was going to play John Stewart, uh, Green Lantern. I mean, they they had a lot uh, of what's his name was going to be the Flash. 
God damn it, I can't think. Of yeah, his he name, was a name guy. I can't remember, but but yeah, I mean, he, he was, was a in name the guy. Predator movie, the the one where they land on the planet and he's got to fight his way out of the. It's like a prison planet. Oh, Adrian Brody. Yes. Okay. He was going to be the Flash. Oh, okay, gotcha. But I mean, dude. They, they, it's like they don't understand. They don't get it. I mean, I have as much interest in seeing a movie about the Joker's origin than I do seeing a movie about Obi Wan, Yoda, right. or fucking Jabba the Hutt. I have equal right. interest. I mean, the only thing with with Star Wars is that even though I'm not excited that they've announced these movies, I'm a fan and I'll still go see them. But I mean, right. I'll go. I mean, I'll go see them. I love Star Wars, but it's not really my choice. It's not just, the choice of what I would have liked to like, see them made. I feel like they're making these these DC announcements or these rumors are getting dropped, and it it really is. They're gonna cry because Justice League doesn't make the money that it deserves to make. But it's not because the, the movie's gonna be bad. It's gonna be because they pulled the rug from out. You know, it's like, oh, we're not moving yeah. forward after this. This is you're watching yeah. a movie that pretty much nobody supports, and we don't even want to go in this direction anymore. No matter how much money it makes. So the, right. at what point do I have faith? and going to see a movie it, at that point it's like all right let's see some popcorn and well what's whatever. weird is that if they had led with that i probably would be more interested they in did seeing lead. it but because oh. they've complete in other words if they're like this is a one off you know for all you know the justice league could totally die at the end of this this is, we're not we're not interested in making an expanded universe we're just interested in making a really badass movie but yeah. it started as a Zack Snyder joint which we know is just a commercial for more shit and then it's been midway through, completely changed, and in yeah, between. It ain't Zack Snyder ain't the one making this jo- Joker origin movie. We well, can't throw that blame on that dude well, anymore. Th- this right. is a complete but that's fucking saying. shit show. But, ju- but you're saying people might not go to see the Justice League because it seems like DC is abandoning the ethos that they put all this energy to sell us on. Right. And what I'm saying is, is if it had been a one-off movie, and they're like, this is just one. Of I see what many, you're many saying. Kind of movies, then I'd probably be more interested. But they've completely changed it in the middle of production, so I, I can't believe that it's going to be really good. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that I, I thought matter. that to begin with. I really have no desire, really, to to even. I mean, somebody put some blurb out about it. Somebody who's directed that's involved in kind of like the uh, the pre production process. It was either writer or one of the producers. And they said, um, we're going to see the Joker as a little kid. And um, when we see him as a little kid, he's ridiculed constantly for a permanent smile on his face. I'm like, dude, really? I mean, I I like, uh, honestly, I I saw a video I was watching the other day. I actually sent it over to uh, Chad Lott over at uh, Scary Thoughts. And we were talking about the Joker and, and the kind of character he is and all of that stuff. And what this video shows you very good, well-researched support that the Joker is the way that he is in that comic book is because he realizes that he's a comic book character. And he realizes... He's Deadpool! He realizes, well, that's the thing. And when they show the guy, when they show the guy on the, when he does the wall to show you that he's showing like all these, it's like the uh, red string connections to all these different things. Well, when he shows you the red string connection for the Joker... It's all the characters that are known to break that are known to break the fourth wall. Now, Deadpool, he's sharing it with you, but what this thing right. shows you is is that the Joker realizes that not only is he a comic book character, but on top of it also is is that he realizes he's the bad guy because he has to be. That's his role. His role is to be the bad guy, but he realizes that everything's fake. And they show a couple of previous comics that he was in. And he's actually sitting there looking up, manipulating the, his word bubbles. Oh, neat. So they show that. And there's another one also where he is outside of the frame of the comic book and he's pulling the pages. So they oh, have that sweet. in another comic. And also, um, I think it's in the Arkham Asylum comic book. Great. They have comic. somebody. It, it's it's one. Of, I can't remember what book it is, but they have a guy. They have a voice actor that they pull in to read the panels. And what's great is is that they stick the Joker in solitary confinement. And when the doctors are talking to him, you know, he's like, yeah, you stuck me in solitary confinement, but I'm fine because I'm talking to my imaginary friends. And he's like, are they really imaginary? Yeah, they're my fans. So <laughs> he's saying all that shit. So they're saying it's 
that calling him super sane. He's actually not insane. He's super yeah. sane because he realizes all this other shit going on inside of the comic books is all fake. God, I would love to see that team up, the yeah. Joker and uh Deadpool. I'd just like to see that I would I'd watch that movie. Make that movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, but the thing with, with it is, I don't really think you can make right. a. Right. I don't really think you can make a movie about it. But you can put some really cool dialogue in there to where he is breaking the fourth yeah. wall, which he's done it several times in the comics. He does it on the Batman. He does it on the Batman um, um, animated series all the time. He breaks the fourth wall. So interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty wow. cool. And and yeah. in that video, also, it's not only the comic books. It actually shows you examples through the movie. Even with some of the dialogue, especially the one with Keith, with uh, Heath Ledger, when he says, you know, it, the guy even says in the video several times, he's like, the Joker's not insane. He's just the head of the curb. So, <laughs> did y'all see uh, really fucking cool. on subject, off subject, the, a thing, uh, it was kind of on the internet the other day, how uh, from the Dark Knight, when Two-Face, when Harvey's in the hospital and his face is all burned off, uh -huh. and Heath Ledger walks in as the Joker dressed up as a nurse, and he's talking, he's talking to Harvey, and he still has the mask on. And then he pulls the mask off, and Harvey loses his mind. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's the Joker. Like, was it really the mask that clued you in that he was not the – like, it, it, it's almost like a Superman moment. Like, when Superman takes his glasses off. Right. Oh, it's Superman. Puts him back on. Oh, it's Clark Kent. You know, well, I think the those. thing also is, is that Harvey probably wasn't looking directly at his face, and it was probably the action of removing the mask and I, probably I drew his attention just, to the Joker. It was a funny little internet thing going on. Well, what I like about that also is, is the fact that isn't it so funny that the Joker disguised himself as a nurse for a company like Warner Brothers where Bugs Bunny was dressing as a girl. Right. So yeah. pretty fucking great. Great, great. That's why we need another Gremlins movie like Gremlins 2. That sapphire look, no, but that satires doing... and even busts the balls of its own fucking production studio. Right. They are doing that reboot, though. They're doing another Gremlins movie. Yeah, they say they want to make it, like, scary and all that shit and everything. Fuck that. I, yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, Gremlins 2, a lot of people shit on it, but it's savage as fuck. I mean, oh, dude, they, I oh, God, movie. they thrashed the fuck out of Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers is the production studio that made it. Right. I mean, yeah, they really were the the first purveyors of meta. Oh Warner yeah, Warner Brothers, you know, and I've always loved them for that. Yeah, I, I, it's still in, in my second favorite Gremlin. Of course, my when I look at the Gremlins, my favorite Glim Gremlin character is uh is the uh, beatnik Gremlin in the first movie that's got the fedora and he's smoking the cigarette yeah, right. and drinking the glass of scotch while he's listening to jazz. Right, that's my number one. My number two favorite Gremlin is the. A uh, female, or uh, I guess androgynous <laughs> female uh, playing gremlin that unmasks the Phantom of the Opera in Gremlins 2. <laughs> and she looks back at the camera and breaks the fourth wall and gives you the blink, and it actually gives you the xylophone hits when the blinks, <laughs> when the eye blinks go down, which is fucking fantastic. So be, great. I, I'm, I read about that, and they said that if they do this reboot, it's going to be more of a, uh, they're going to use the puppets as well as some CGI. Oh, that's so. how they have to. I mean, I mean, yeah, you got to go back yeah. to the old school horrible fucking effects of Gremlins, which was groundbreaking at the time. But yeah, yeah but it's fucking horrible when you go back and watch it now. Still a great movie, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, boys, we got anything to add? I uh, don't think so. Nope. No. All right, well, look, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, Y'all know the spiel. Look, head over there to iTunes. Please subscribe. Please leave us, leave us a review if you are a true fan of the show. We also ask that you go over to YouTube. You know, give us a thumbs up on the video. You can leave a comment there as well. All of our back episodes are on ppvguys.com. You can also check us out on Twitter and Instagram. Also, check out our friends Not Real Radio and Scary Thoughts. Do the same thing for them. Thank you for listening. And see.